if you've clicked on this video, then it's quite likely that you are interested or at least a little bit curious as to what it's like to volunteer for Girl Guiding. They are the UK's leading charity for girls and young women and have been going for over a hundred years. And I have been very proudly volunteering for my local Girl Guiding unit for Rainbows for the last two and a half years. And I thought it was perfect timing on International Women's Day to talk to you a little bit about my role and what it's like, but also the UN's theme for 2023 this year is about digital which is innovation and technology for gender equality celebrating and recognizing women and young girls that are making incredible contributions to technology and online education and so as I reached an amazing milestone of a hundred thousand subscribers recently I thought it was about time that I talked to you about this and used my platform and voice in a way that hopefully will help or inspire or maybe just educate you a little bit more about girl guys and as they're also entering a whole season of rebranding some of their logos, colours, words and slogans, it's a perfect opportunity to sort of give you an update and I also have been asked to share what Girls Can Do Anything means to me, which is their campaign for International Women's Day as well. So more on that later. I'm gonna give you a bit of a background about my own journey. So having been a rainbow and brownie when I was a kid and how I got to the point of becoming a volunteer, what that looks like, what a unit meeting is like, my role within our unit and my vision for the future in terms of what I share here on my channel. So if you are new. Hi, I'm Brogan. I make home lifestyle travel vlogs. I share lots of things here on YouTube and on Instagram, so do make sure you follow me and I hopefully will inspire you in some ways to maybe get involved in your own community or if you're interested in volunteering, there'll be lots of links below. I am really proud of what I've been able to achieve so far and I feel like this is maybe just the very beginning and I'm very, very excited to be working closely with the Girl Guiding team as well. So without further ado, let's get started. So as I said, Girl Guiding has been around for a hundred years. So before I give you a little bit of a backstory, I thought I'd break you down the different sections of Girl Guiding. Rainbows, which is where I volunteer, are girls age four to seven, brownies age seven to 10, guides age 10 to 14, and rangers age 14 to 18. But of course there are opportunities even further than that, obviously as young volunteers and leaders and volunteers like myself. So the Girl Guiding community and charity is something that is just doing incredible work and I just want to shout about it more. So let me tell you about my own little journey and backstory. So I am almost 29 years old, but I want to take you back to 1999 because that's when I joined Rainbows. I have a photo of me here in my very dashing orange bib, making my promise. I don't sadly have this anymore, but we did find the photo, so I was really happy about that. I remember really enjoying Rainbows. I actually remember the hall that I used to go to. My mum said that I was so keen to go to Brownies and I remember Brownies even more. So here is me doing my promise at Brownies as well. We had a toadstool in the middle. It was actually in our primary school hall and I had my uniform and I was um, a gnome and I actually have the blanket to show you which makes me so happy. I can't believe we have this. So this is my original brownie blanket. This little badge is falling off. So so let's put that down but I've gone through all of them to see if I could figure any of them out this is my promise badge they don't have quite the same branding and things anymore but you can see I have like the golden jubilee 90th year brownies I love that I found I have a collector badge up there if you know me a little bit you know I love collecting things some things haven't changed and some things have come full circle I guess I've got a skiing badge I don't know what a lot of them are actually I think I'm going to bring this in and ask my leaders if they have any inspiration or ideas on what some of this is but my unit celebrated their 50 birthday that kind of thing so I actually loved brownies so much I didn't go on to do guides or rangers I think just where I went up to secondary school and other interests took over but I do strongly remember my time I did brownie camp I think I joined brownies in 2001 by the looks of it or 2002 maybe but from all the dates on the on the blanket but I also had a sash which had a load of badges on too but I don't know where that is anyone else recognize this and if you were a 90s brownie or early 2000s were you a sixer gnome situation and what one were you in because I was the white one 
if you know, you know. <laughs> Let's talk about joining as a volunteer then. So I need to take you back to 2020, the year we all know what happened. I had a lot more time on my hands that particular year. And I tried to be as charitable and giving as possible. Something I really wanted to do more of was just give more of my time. I had this time on my hands. I actually saw an ad on Instagram. It popped up for me and it was like, have you considered volunteering for girl guiding? And it just, hit me like a ton of bricks. I just felt this weird calling that I should do that. I was like, yes, I wanna do that. So I clicked the link, I applied. I was put in touch with my Southwest regional uh, officers. I then did my DBS check. I was then put in touch with the smaller units um, locally to me. So we looked at where I lived and where the units were around me and what days and times I was available. I also got a choice of if I wanted to join Rainbows, Brownies, Guides or Rangers and I picked Rainbows who are the youngest. They start at age four but we have mostly age five to seven. I also did a little bit of online training, my safe space online training which I had to complete. At the end of 2020 I joined virtually on Zoom at that time so for the first few months it was all virtual which actually kind of worked really well for me because I was able to just listen in and learn the ropes, hear how they run their sessions what they do what they like it was so perfect timing and then I remember the first time I joined them we started doing our units outside and I was so nervous because I haven't had loads of experience working with children I've done some things I've worked for Go Ape and I've had various roles that have involved children but it's not been sort of my forefront and I wasn't sure how good I would be but I think I took to it pretty well once we were allowed to meet back inside we rejoined back in the hall where we we meet every Fridays um, which is kind of like a, a church hall if you like so we meet from 5 15 to 6 30 every Friday so it's about an hour and a half two hours of my time and I also do a little bit outside of that as well which I'll talk to you about but that is the story of how I got started with becoming a volunteer so my role within girl guiding as I said I uh, work with rainbows I am a unit helper is my official title I'm not a leader I have been asked if I'd like to do my leader training and I think it's something I would be interested in but for the first you know few years I've been doing it I just wanted to be a supporting role as my life is sometimes a little bit busy. <laughs> I am sometimes called to be in London or I travel a lot so I knew I didn't want to necessarily lead a group. I know that my hours sometimes are a little bit chaotic so uh, so far it's actually worked really well. I am mostly always available, I only miss the odd Friday here and there but uh, yeah it's become such a big part of my routine and life. My role also extends to supporting with planning sessions so we meet up outside of our um, Fridays to talk about what we want to do each term. We look at our UMAs, which is our, our unit meeting activities and which ones we're working towards with the girls and what badges they are doing. I'm sometimes asked to run errands, purchase supplies. I bought some food and chopped up some fruit for them yesterday afternoon before I went to Rainbows. And then during the Friday evenings, I am basically there to help support with anything. I help the girls with their coats where we do a bit of colouring and I'll talk you through what a typical night looks like in a minute. I'll get involved in all the activities with them. I'm just there fully to support if they need to go to the bathroom, if they need a drink, you know, all of that. I just get fully involved. I work with with quite a few other people to help make it all run smoothly. We actually run brownies at the same time in another hall just next door. So there's quite a lot of us uh, collectively, but in Rainbow specifically, we have two main leaders, I guess, another unit helper, and then we often have some uh, D of E school helpers um, or young leaders that are coming in to do their volunteering as well. So we can often change around and people come and go, but uh, mostly we have been a solid group and team for a while and it's worked so well I think anyway. I also have done a few away days as well at our local guide camp so I've supported on day events. I haven't done any overnight um, camping yet, I'd love to though, <laughs> but I have done uh, day things where the girls have come for like the morning and they've done like next steps where they've learned what to expect when they go up to brownies and helping them with that transition. Sometimes there are day outings like the local farm or theme park or cinema and we also take 
take the girls to places like the beach or yeah like the forest and we do other things outside of just our hall as well just because that's what girl guiding is all about we all get out and about and have fun <laughs> so what does a typical evening look like at rainbows i will arrive around five o'clock about 15 minutes before the girls come and get set up ask our leader what she needs i will help lay out colouring, pens, and then they will come in. And between us, we usually have somebody at the door, somebody helping them take their coats and bags off, and then I'll probably typically be helping them get started with their colouring. Then we'll sit in a big circle, we go around the circle, talk about if anyone's been doing any interest badges, which is so sweet when you hear about the things they've done outside and at home and bring in their stuff to show us what they've done. So that's always really sweet, but they sometimes wanna talk about, I don't know, the birthday party they went to or the holiday they've been on or something they did at school this week. So that's always quite sweet. We just go around the circle and talk about things. Then we get started on our activity for the day. So we could be doing anything from crafts to building things, designing stuff, learning. We've done what's inside a first aid kit. We've made so many things. I'm gonna to talk to you about some of my favorites but that's what we'll do, we'll do our activity. And then if there's time, we will always try and do a game or some songs. They have a couple of games they love. There's one called Hedgehog Snuffle. They have the rainbow blanket that they hide one of the girls under, we have to guess who it is, and then they snuffle around. Honestly, it's a lot of fun, but we do that. Um, we sing some songs, there's a few songs. It took me a little while to learn them, but I'm there now. And we also have a rainbow song to end off the night as well, which we do. We'll always typically sit down in a circle at the end too, and just talk about um, how everything went, and if there's any badges to give out the girls get those as well and then we'll help them put on their coats and gather their things always a lot of coloring and drawings they want to take home um but that is pretty much what a night looks like we finish at half past six and i normally go home around quarter to seven and that's it about two hours of my friday night a few things i wanted to share were just some of the activities we've loved and also that i now continually get badges i'm very lazy and i haven't sewn mine on so i've sort of balanced and placed them all on the blanket here in fact i'll put a bit of a b-roll over you can see so this is my guiding blanket now i've started a new one as i'm you know this is a different stage of my life and i love collecting the badges as you know i'm a collector <laughs> i got my collector badge back in the day but now i'm collecting some of the badges that the girls do so there's quite a mixture here but i always uh i'm grateful for a badge so hopefully i'll build on this and it will get really full and i can see all the things i experienced and did but one of them actually for this badge this is a scarecrow challenge this was one of my favorite activities we did the girls actually made a scarecrow and they designed a head one group designed the arms and a body and we brought it together and that was really fun we also made robots out of cardboard recycling that was very fun i actually have a photo of that so i'll show you some of their robots which was more challenging than it looks i had to cut out a lot of circles to slot the toilet roll for arms and legs in we also love doing fruit kebabs they love a fruit kebab yesterday we actually had pancakes and they had scotch pancakes with fruit and sauces which was always fun we made a marble run recently out of loads of loo roll that they brought in again chaos but fun i also really love a promise evening when they make their promise and our leader gives them their badge and their certificate and the parents come in and they take a photo it's adorable I also wanted to tell you about the cupboard because this was a big part of my job that I gave myself early on. When we were able to meet back in person inside, I took one look at our cupboard and I was actually in shock how it looked. Now my home is by no means a perfectly organized place, but I do like a label and a box and you know, things having a home. So I'm gonna show you, this is what the cupboard looked like before. And this was my after and I think I've done a good job. I've still got quite a lot to do. I've been um, changing it over time. I bought a paper rack recently and a couple of those colourful boxes. So it's starting to come together, but I'm not quite fully done because I had to figure out what they need and how often they use it and what would be most functional. But uh, yeah, obviously it always gets a little bit messy because we're chucking stuff in at the end of the night. It's, it's looking better. And that was a big part of my job at the beginning. And I think I made an impact and I helped. So why do I do the role and what do I get out of it? Because I think everyone has very busy lives and like I said my life can be all over the place I don't have a traditional typical nine to five job however I started it in a, at a time where things were particularly difficult for me online I was having a really hard year and I wasn't loving things so much and when I came 
on Zoom or I did rainbows on a Friday night, I could be having the worst week ever, and this still applies now, and I get there and I'm just myself. Now, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this in any other roles that you may do, but I put a lot of myself out online. I share a lot of my life. I don't know, I guess sometimes I'm always on, and when I go to rainbows, I'm just brogan they just call me brogan i'm rainbow brogan i just am all about focusing on the girls it's not about me it's about them and you do it to make sure the girls have the best time possible i had the best time when i was a kid and i want to give that back and it's all about making sure we're giving them fun experiences support and i want to talk to you a bit more about uh, girls can do anything but in terms of what i why i do it sometimes i think <laughs> who helps who more because I obviously try and help the girls as much as possible within my role but I don't know if anyone realizes it if you're not a volunteer that they can help you equally as much it's very rewarding it's also just a lot of fun I can be a big kid when I'm there I will lie on the floor and color with them I will get involved with the games I will do the actions to the silly dances and songs I will fully fully immerse myself I pride myself on being quite fun I've got a very loud voice I remember when I worked at go eight but I had to give a safety briefing I would be quite good at being able to get the kids to listen because I <laughs> vocalise things, I'm very loud. But I also think I'm fun and the other leaders that I run it with are the same age as me. So, you know, I've made friends as well, which is so lovely. I love hearing about what they've been up to or just hearing about their lives. One of them got married last year and she very kindly invited me to her wedding. So it's been lovely to make friends as well. But the girls, it's so rewarding watching them grow they come to us when they're four or five years old and we help them transition to hopefully want to go up to brownies most of them do in all honesty but it's so important that we give them the skills and the confidence to then go up they don't go up by school year they go up by age so they go up at different times of the year that age they change a lot actually from you know age five to seven they come up with the most incredible fun stories and their brains work so like differently and they're just really actually quite inspiring the way that they think about the world i I'm aware that people say that I help inspire them or um, encourage them to do something and I'm constantly constantly reading messages every single day from people saying that I helped them with something or you know they enjoyed a video I did or I entertained them in some way and when I come to rainbows I take a lot of those skills and put them into supporting the girls so you know whether it's just being a really good listener or whether it's um, encouraging them to do something that they've thought about or helping them think outside the box you know it's so 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 lovely to be able to give back to your community it's proven that volunteering can you know boost happiness and it can really help somebody feel like they are giving back and it's very rewarding and um i do it just for the badges <laughs> no i'm joking i don't really i do it because it really is really lovely to do what i do coming into rainbows is like the ultimate escapism i don't often talk about what i do it does come up here and there and some of the mums have seen my videos and some of the girls have also seen my videos Videos, but it's not really something that we ever talk about I don't really want to because it's not about that obviously now I'm here talking about it my worlds have now collided but that's because I do feel like the timing's there and I feel confident enough to talk about Girl Guiding as a company and just how much they've changed my life actually if you are thinking of becoming a volunteer you can give as little or as much as you like I personally try and do as much as I can for what the unit and the girls need but obviously like I said my hours and, and time is sometimes a bit sporadic I told myself even if I just did it for a year then at least I've given it a go and two and a half years later I'm still here so something is obviously working if you're thinking about volunteering I will have the links below for girl guiding and um, ways that you can get started I really hope that you consider it and you enjoy it as much as I do so the vision <laughs> I wanted to talk to you a bit about girl guiding um, and International Women's Day they are focusing on their campaign which is girls can do anything and for me that means actually encouraging girls to follow their dreams a, a believing in their ability to achieve those goals and feeling heard and supported and seen is all about encouraging girls to be the best versions of themselves i think that's how i translate it and as i recently hit my own massive goal this big dream i had of reaching a hundred thousand subscribers now more than ever 
have I felt so strongly that girls really can do anything? I can feel myself getting emotional because when I was 17 and I started my YouTube channel and I had no idea where to take me, I just really feel strongly that with the right support and resources and tools and that feeling of knowing that you, you have your people and they have your back, um, you can really go on to, to do whatever you put your mind to and whatever brings you joy. And I hope that I can continue to do that within my role at Girl Guiding. My vision for moving forward, I broke it down into four sections. I want to hopefully do some fundraising. I would love if we as a community here online could maybe get behind some fundraising. I haven't quite decided what that looks like yet, but maybe I can do something fun. If you wanted to donate, we can definitely look into doing something like that, I think would be really cool. Number two is I want to raise awareness for being a volunteer, what it's like, what my role Role looks like and hopefully inspire you to consider it. Number three is to use my voice and platform for good. 100,000 people is a lot and I have 60,000 over on Instagram so I want to be able to share campaigns that Girl Guiding are working on and really great um, pieces of research they've done and also just the fun side of what I get up to on a Friday or if I'm doing anything outside of that. I'll never share where I am or the girls or my other leaders out of just total um, privacy obviously but I will share really cool things that Girl Guiding are up to and maybe where my role takes me. And lastly, I just want to continue my volunteering um, both at my unit and beyond. I want to expand my volunteering. I want to support the Girl Guiding brand as they go into this next exciting phase of their rebrand. I'm really, really excited to see how that translates into our own unit meetings. But I just, like I said, think Girl Guiding are doing an incredible job. I'm very proud of my role. And hopefully this has given you a little bit of an insight of what I get up to on a Friday when I say I'm doing my other job. I'm gonna leave some links below if you have any other questions for me then do let me know you can also follow me over on instagram where i think i'll probably use that platform mostly to share things and you may hear me talk about it in a vlog here and there but uh it's something i'm just going to continue to do see where it takes me i'll keep getting my badges i might share some with you on instagram and that kind of thing but i just want to say thank you also to girl guiding for supporting me also the biggest love to my fellow girl guides whether you are a young leader you are in a unit you are a volunteer or you work for the company i just want to say thank you for listening and watching this video and i'm really looking forward to continuing um, what i do um both on and offline thank you so much for watching and i'll see you again very soon bye